Hi everyone, it's Nono here and welcome to my live stream. So this is Nono.ma live. This is live number 12. And as we've been following over the past weeks, uh, we're going to continue with the machine learning series. First thing, let me know in the chat if the sound goes through properly and if you can see me and if it's not laggy. And uh, what we're going to see first is as part of the last week's video, we saw how to write a neural network, uh, like a really simple, actually sequential model with TensorFlow.js. And uh, I would remind you before we get started that if this is a type of content that you'd like to see more of in the channel, go ahead and like the video and go ahead and subscribe if you want to get notified when I upload new videos or when I go live next so you don't miss anything. All right. So we're creating a small community around the Getting Simple podcast, uh, writing, machine learning, creative coding, and, and many other things. You can join on the Discord server at none of the mass last Discord. And uh, I will remind you that, you know, last week we saw an overview of what embroidery experiments I'm doing, uh, an announcement that we'll have soon a new episode with Jose Luis Garcia El Castillo on the Getting Simple podcast. So I, the episode is edited, but you know, it, it needs to be prepared a bit for publication, but it's almost there. It's a one hour episode, a catch up episode in which we talk about teaching, about the fear of publishing, about uh, micromanaging and delegating things, uh, lessons I learned from uh, editing 40 episodes and spending three years doing a podcast. Also about uh, live streaming and how it, you know, the differences between teaching on site and teaching virtually. All right, so Life 11 is on uh, my YouTube channel, so you can go ahead and, and go into that if you want to learn more about what we did with TensorFlow. Also, uh, web basics, things that have to do with JavaScript and HTML and, and other things. All right, so today we're going to keep it brief. We're going to start coding right away. I want to um, mention, right, and thanks to Jeff for letting me know that the audio is sounding correctly. So I want to mention some of the notes that I've prepared for today uh, of what we can expect to see on this live stream. So this is live 12, I'll say it again. This week is on Tuesday because I will be completely off on, on Thursday and I wanted to make sure that we had a live stream this week. A recap from last week, right? So here I'm listing uh, TensorFlow.js TensorFlow um, samples. We built two different samples last week. One that had to do with writing a sequential model was a linear regression model uh, that we were training with like really, really simple linear data samples. And we saw the trade-offs of like training and many like training for ep how many epochs, uh, what the model does when you add more data to the training set and things like that. Some of those concepts, we also used ResNet uh, version 2 ResNet 50 from TensorFlow Hub that was loading the model right away from the internet into a browser tab. So all of that you can go and see in last week's video. Today we were mentioning we were going to process the logits uh, of the output of that ResNet model and load the KTOP classes. I'm not sure if I'm going to go through that today. We're going to focus on something different. But, you know, if that's something that interests you, we can all, always take a look in the future. There are codes online that do that. So I'm not sure when we'll be able to get around that. What I've been thinking for today is changing gears and going to looking at TensorFlow for iOS and running neural networks and machine learning models on an iPad or an iPhone or on you know a mobile device. That is because I, you know, I have, uh, I have a, an iPad Pro here that I haven't been using a lot lately. And I want to get back at coding some iPhone apps with it or, or iPad apps with it. Uh, all right. So one thing that I want to show before we get started with something new is that if you go to this URL, so on GitHub, on my username, nonoesp uh, slash live, I'm trying to post as much of the code of the past live streams as I can. I haven't been too diligent with that, but you know, if you go to live number 11, at least we have the, the code samples from, from last week's exercise. You can see here the regression, simple regression or linear model that, that we had as, as data samples. And if you go 
into each of these uh, JavaScript files, you'll find uh, all the code that we wrote, right? There is not that much code, but you know, there were many concepts that we introduced over uh, the session to be able to either train a linear regressor with TensorFlow.js on a browser tab or to load a ResNet 50 model and right away do predictions into like input data. In this case, we were actually uh, doing predictions into random data and getting data that was formatted the way that we would expect the output data to be, that was logit. Uh, but it would make sense that in some other example, we actually get a, a real image from the webcam or from a picture that we input or drag to the tab and make predictions with it. All right, let's close that. And as promised, we're going to dive into this section. I hope that you're excited about it and, and that this is something that is going to help you in any way. iOS works really differently than Android, but for the fact of model formats and the way that you will export or train a model in TensorFlow is exactly the same. It's just the implementation later that works differently. I have to say I haven't prepared for this session, so we're going to see this from scratch. I'm just going to be Googling, I'm going to be opening Xcode, I'm going to be connecting to the iPad, I'm going to be these things. One thing I do have is Xcode installed, and I know that I can run applications on my iPad. You could do this also with a simulator on the computer. Uh, we could do it in many different ways. All right, so I'm almost sure that I deleted this test app example that we have here maybe yeah so i deleted that one so that might be somewhere else all right so first thing we do we open xcode and we have this um this pop-up menu or this like entry menu that that we get in here and we just want to go and, and create a new xcode project right that would be the easiest thing that we can do at the moment all right so with xcode open the the program is asking us whether we want to build an iOS app, a Mac OS app, a watch OS app, a TV OS app, and some other type. We're going to go with iOS today. Mostly for the new M1 computers, Mac OS is going to be compatible with iOS applications. So if you create an application for iOS or for Mac OS, you're going to be able to build and run your applications in both systems. So it's going to be cross-platform in that sense. And that's what Apple is trying to do, is trying to unify both environments so you only code once and then can deploy anywhere in their platforms, right? Not really anywhere. But... So we're going to go with App and we're just going to click on Next. And I'm just going to put here, uh, product name is going to be Live12 and I've set up my you know, my, my account. So I have a paid Apple developer account. You don't need to have one to do this. This is just to provision profiles for, for like official testing and to upload to the Apple store and be able to, to sell your apps or distribute them for free on the app store. I have here Swift UI, so you can use Storyboard Swift UI. Swift UI is the new workflow, the new way that Apple introduced I believe this year in their developer conference or maybe past year to develop UI where you can preview in a, in a new way and it's declarative syntax. So it sounds a bit more like it would be like react components or something for iOS, but you know, I haven't tried it too much, but the syntax looks pretty nice. So that's something that I, I want to get more into. I used to build back in the time, like 2000. 11, I think I started building apps on Objective-C. So that's another programming language that you can use with iOS. And later they introduced Swift. So I've done some coding with Swift in 2017, 2018. I haven't been doing a lot of it lately, but I want to update some of my apps to the more uh, modern uh, coding languages. With Objective-C, you can also use C++ code, which is really powerful, and with Swift, you can also use Objective-C methods. So arguably, even though it requires a bit more syntax and, and coding, with Swift, you could use Objective-C and can use C++. A lot of, you know, a lot of terminology if you haven't used any of those programming languages, but at least this serves conceptually for some of the things. And what we intend to do here is to code in TensorFlow and export a model or download models already trained and use them in 
our devices. All right, so we go here, we are not gonna write test, but I'm just gonna leave that there. Language Swift and then Swift app. I believe if I go, you know, if I do here something like storyboard and UI kit, I can select Objective C, right? But for now, we're just going to select Swift UI, Swift UI app, and Swift. And we click accept, and now we just need to say where we want to save that. And then the project, the iOS project, is created. We're gonna get here a boilerplate application. This is a declarative um, component, I think. They call it content view. I'm not sure what it means. And you see it has some padding. I can click here on resume, resume to uh, con uh, enable the, the rendering of this Swift UI component uh, in here. And what that's gonna do is uh, if it works, it's going to get that code, render it live, and then update the, the visual component that I'm coding on the right of the, the screen. All right, so you see hello world. So this is everything that we've coded so far. That's the boilerplate application. And if we do this here, so let's say we just update this code. So none of my life. So the component updates life. I'm not sure, you know, I'm not familiar with these methods, but let's say we just change the padding. So we can, you know, we're changing the padding of this uh, view by changing code and we can see it live. So we can see a live update of the, the components. So as I um, click here, put a dot, and I put here font or, or like font size maybe, or I'm not sure, text size. Yeah, so maybe, you know, there, there are things that, um, I'm not familiar with this, so I'm not gonna go into detail with this, but what we're gonna do is that we're just going to look straight away and maybe we can do other videos in which we are actually looking at, um, how to build iOS applications in more detail today, you know, we don't really have that much time to, to go over everything today. Okay, so we're gonna open a new window and I'm going to run here, sample Swift UI app TensorFlow Lite. Let's just, let's just see what comes up. iOS quick start, TensorFlow iOS, iOS image classification example. Let me just make this a bit bigger, All right? And maybe I go into the right. And, you know, here we have an explanation of the source code. You should uh, so also read TensorFlow Lite iOS image classification. This app uses image classification to continuously classify whatever sees from the devices we are facing camera displaying the top most probable classifications. It allows the user to choose between a floating point or quantized model and select the number of threads to perform inference on. All right. So floating point has more precision. Quantized are models that have been compressed, has a bit less accuracy, but you know, we remove precision from where the model supposedly doesn't need it. Add TensorFlow Lite to your Swift or Objective-C project. TensorFlow Lite offers native iOS libraries written in Swift and Objective-C. Start writing your own code using the Swift image classification sample as starting point. The sections below demonstrate how to add TensorFlow Lite, Swift, or Objective-C to your project. All right, Cocoa Pods or Cocoa Pods. Cocoa Pods is the package manager for iOS applications. Not sure if it also works on Mac, but as you can see here, run pod install, it, it's like npm init, I think. So you just start a pod file and that pod file will contain your project's dependencies. So you can pull packages that you need in that specific project. I'm talking about Node. I'm not sure if you're familiar with Node. So Node.js is the dependency manager for, so npm is the dependency manager for Node.js, which is, you know, JavaScript library dependencies. Okay, I'm gonna scroll through. So you would specify use frameworks, bot, TensorFlow, Lite, Swift. So this is a code that we will need 
if we want to use TensorFlow Lite in Swift in our project or TensorFlow Lite of Object C. Objective C, these are two different libraries, it seems. There are stable releases and nightly release available for both TensorFlow Lite Swift and TensorFlow Lite Objective C pods. If you do not specify a version constraint, as in the above examples, Cocoa Pods will pull the latest stable release. But you can write the specific version constraints. So you can set, for instance, this means that you want two or something above, I think. All right, we're gonna go down. For nightly version, by default, GPU and core ML delegates are excluded from the pod to reduce the binary size. You can include them by specifying that. So from here, what we can see is that GPU operations happen on your iPad or iPhone or iOS devices will use Core ML and Metal to start like shaders and GPU operations that execute or process your machine learning algorithms, maybe training, inference or whatever, and make it faster. So it allows your, um, your device to make use of the GPUs that are on the device and latest, like the more modern devices make use of something called a neural engine that is a specific piece of hardware that executes these operations so these machine operations on your device this will allow you to test the latest features blah 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 based on developers this is if you want to build it from source i think c plus plus you can also use c api or c plus plus api import the library and this is actual coding so import tensorflow light pod tf tensorflow light h all right so these are this is how you would import it all right it seems like this is the the crash course on how to use um, tensorflow light in in ios right so we're gonna leave this here but if we open this ios image classification example let's see what we get so this is an example application for tensorflow light on iOS, it uses image classification. So let's see what this is here, right? So it's this example here, and the starter model is here. Uh, image classification to continuously classify whatever it sees from the device's back camera. Yeah, this is what we saw before. It's using, as you can see here, it's using MobileNet. We've used this model before. The application must be run on device, right? So this means that this specific example can't run on the iOS simulator. These instructions walk you through building and running the demo on an iOS device. For explanation, the source code, right? For details of the model, we need iOS 12 or above. Let's actually look at my device. So my device has software, 14, I think I have iOS 14, so probably not an issue. Yeah, 14.2, Xcode 10, valid Apple developer ID, Xcode command line tools, Xcode cell install, CocoaPods. All right, pseudo him install CocoaPods. All right, if this is a new install, you'll need to run the Xcode application once to agree to the license before continuing. Camera not found. All right, build and run. All right, so let's just try to do that. It seems I'm not sure if I have the, the CocoaPods um, program here. So I'm going to go into CocoaPods, Pods, CocoaPods, install with brew. So maybe simply running brew install CocoaPods works. All right. Cool. And while we're doing that, so let's just come here. So in CocoaPods, I could do something like this. TensorFlow Lite Swift, and 
yeah, and this is the library, right? So you can look for packages. There's like how to install this, these things, Python. See the TensorFlow install guide for the pip package to enable GPU support, use Docker container and build from source. This is TensorFlow Lite. Oh, this, this just tells you, okay. So this is just giving us the, the default description of TensorFlow in the, in the repo. Official builds, lib TensorFlow Mac OS CPU, lib TensorFlow, right? Cool. All right. But yeah, so Cocoa Pods, if you go here and you say, let's see, uh, Alamo Fire. So this is a, like a really famous um, set of libraries made by, we look for his name. Yeah, Matt Thompson. Yeah, so for instance here, this guy makes a bunch of really nice um, networking and utility libraries for iOS, and they're all released through uh, CocoaPods, right? So it's like a lot of those dependencies are are there, and I. Ooh. This is nice. All right, let's see if CocoaPods is ready. So it seems that we have it now. So let me see, pod version. All right, we got it. Okay. Okay, so I have CocoaPods now and it seems that that was the last dependency that I was missing. So I have the command line tools, I have everything. So we're just going to clone these, uh, these examples. So it seems like we need to clone this repo. So we're going to go to our, to our desktop. We're going to clone that repo. We're going to go to the repo and open it. And let me see light examples, image classification iOS and this is our project. So this is a this is a project for iOS. So it probably written in, in Swift. Yeah, so it's written in Swift. So you know we created our own project and, and you can see that, that that is here and I could either run it on on my iPad. So this is actually building the application and then copying it into my iPad and running it. So I think I could show that that screen here. Yeah, so if we go here, we click there. So we have the application and store the connection, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So if I, you know, we have this application here. Hello. Um, live stream. So we just click on here and on my iPad, the application runs again, and then we have it there. And there is no, there is no interaction that, that we have here, but you know, you can see the, the code is here and I'm not sure if, if there's something that you can see on, on the screen, but yeah. So the thing is that we have the, we have the application running here on the iPad. And what we're going to do is that we're going to leave the the screen of the iPad there, we're gonna close this application. So we're gonna make a new, we're gonna make a new um, desktop there. And 
Do, 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 do. We've cloned this thing. So we're going to open the Xcode project. So I've just double clicked on the Xcode project file. So this one, uh, there probably is a model here or maybe the model is downloaded. So this is, you know, this is something we didn't get to last week with um, ResNet. So these are a set of um, labels that correspond to the different indices on, on the prediction confidences that get returned from the model. So the prediction scores. All right, we don't want to update the iPad. And then we have this project here. So I have, um, this is my, my Xcode project. And, and we're going to uh, try to run this. So I, straight away, you know, if we try to run this on, on one of these devices that are um, uh, simulation devices, so these are devices that if you don't require things like this application that requires a real webcam or like a real camera on the device, you can run and test many of the functionality of the applications that you're coding. And all right. So hi, Major. I, I see you just uh, joined us. And I'm going to run this on the iPad so we can, okay, build fail. Let, let's see what is happening here. Signing for requires development team, select a developer team. All right. So this developer team that we require, and I'm not sure if I can make the, yeah, the font bigger. Mm. All right, so let me just add a new template here. All right, and for all of the font, well, maybe, yeah, for all of the fonts, so this is SF Mono Regular. So let's try to do the same. Oh, not for that. So he's trying to make the font of, of the code bigger so you can see it. SF. All right. Yeah, I I was afraid that, you know, iOS and, and Android are not the same thing. And I know that it's it's not um, cross platform or anything, but for now, I'm just going to try to to do everything here on on iOS. We might I don't have any Android devices, but we could also I could get something and and also try it. But the purpose here is just that we can uh, maybe develop some applications that use you know mobile devices or TensorFlow Lite uh, models on device, and then we start making some applications. I also want to recover programming on Swift so we can create an application to create data sets. So some logic to, to draw and then make data sets. I know that Major has previously mentioned that he would like to see how to create data sets for Sketch RNN. I'm not sure if you've done further work on that, but that's something that I'm also looking at because I want to, to streamline a bit the, the creation of new input data um, to be able to train new models. All right, so we were making the code bigger. So this code is bigger. It seems like I still need to do some other parts of the code bigger as well. Comments. Mm -hmm. How big did I do this? 18. Uh, all right, strings, characters, numbers. Keywords. All right, seems like everything's ready now. Uh, let me know if you can see the, the code here. Mm. Okay, what we needed to do first is signing and capabilities. So we need to choose my developer account and we're gonna press here. Hopefully that works. So now our application, oh, all right. Yeah, we're, we're not going to get it so far. No such model TensorFlow Lite. Okay, so this happens because we haven't really installed the CocoaPods um, package or however it's called, the model. And if we go here to Lite, 
examples, image, classification, iOS. I believe we just need to do pod install. And you know, that will look for, for the dependencies, as you can see there, and we'll look for TensorFlow Lite mm, Suite. All right, yeah, thanks Mario for letting me know that the, the font size looks good. So if I look here and look at the contents of the, the pod file, we can see that we have the use frameworks that is required with Swift projects, and then we have pod TensorFlow Lite Swift. That's the, that's the package that is, or the model that is gonna get downloaded as we you know, do pod install and look for all of these dependencies. All right, so let's move here and see. Okay, so I needed to allow network access for that. And you know, this error probably, or hopefully is the, the last one that, that we need there. All right, let's take a look at the application architecture here. It seems like it's pretty well organized. So the model is here. So this is a, so this is a, a mobile net train model with, well, probably with uh, unquantized as well, I see. The input image is gonna be 224 by 224 with three channels is something we've seen repeatedly on this uh, live stream before. And we can open this um, file with uh, Netron and, and and inspect the model. So we can see the, the image input size is 224 by 224, it's set to one. I'm not sure if that means that the model has always to be, uh, I guess like it's just, it gets a batch of images. But yeah, so this is the, the quantized model. And then at the end we have a softmax operation and then we return maybe 1000, 1001 labels. And whatever label has the maximum argument will uh, grab that, the string of that class from from the, the labels list that we have here. And then, you know, you say like, if it's whatever index for this is wallet or wall clock or whatever. Okay, so let's look at this. It seems like we've installed TensorFlow Lite C and TensorFlow Lite Swift. This might mean that the Swift model is just a wrapper around the, the TensorFlow Lite C. Same thing probably for the Objective C one. There's one dependency from the pod file and two total pods installed. All right, so please close any current code sessions and use the image classification XC workspace for this, right? So I just want to, let's let just go that, make sure that you can see this. This, you know, Cocoa pod creates a new workspace that is not your Xcode proj file. And you have to open that one to make sure that not only the project gets loaded, but the project and the dependency uh, Cocoa Pods. All right, so we're gonna close the terminal. I'm gonna close the project and I'm gonna go here, look for my XC workspace, double click, and then we just open that. So uh, remember that we have our, our iPad in here. So the iPad just went to sleep, but we have it here. And uh, now we have our project loaded with the cocoa pods. So we have the image classification project and we have the, the pods in there, right? So we can see our pod file. So that says like it's a Ruby. I guess like that's because um, this pod file tool, so the cocoa pods tool is built in Ruby with, uh, it's like a gem. And uh, we have only TensorFlow Lite Swift. Now we go here, we have the both of the, um, both of the dependencies that we that we got here installed. This is a framework file. Yeah, and it seems I don't know. Yeah, I'm I'm not sure, but this seems like a an interface to the to the C API because there's not there's not a lot of code here. Right, so yeah, so this seems to be like the dependency. 
All right. So let's keep going. So have the project here. We're going to play here on uh, build. So we're going to build on, on the iPad. So we'll go back to, to that window here and we'll see if um, this works. All right, so the build succeeded and now I need to, now I'm tasked with looking for something that we can try to, to recognize. It's asking TF like classify would like to access the camera and we got it. So this is now um, predicting, let me see. If I letter opener, let me let me just make sure we'll see this properly. All right, cool. Maybe we put this landscape. Does it work, landscape? Maybe not. Yeah, maybe not. Okay. So let's see what we got here. Let me just remove this thing from here. This washer. Okay. Computer keyboard. Notebook. What is this? Joystick. What about this? This is a behind the scenes. Computer, computer keyboard. What about this? Remote control, nice. What about this? Mouse. All right, yeah, you get the point. So these seems, and you can get the, um, on, on the lower, well, I'm actually over that, so let me, let me just move a bit. So over the, um, or let me just move myself. All right. So what you can see on the bottom right is the, um, the percentage of confidence. So remote control, mouse, iPod. So you get something with really high precision and the two other are really, really low. So let me see if we if we put this thing here. Not drumstick letter opener. I'm trying to find something else. Um, what do I have here? What about this thing? iPod, laptop, notebook. All right. Yeah, more or less, you know, it seems like it's doing something. So we're going to just move this here and open that. Cool. All right. Let's go back to where we were before. So we have this, this application now that is working. We can uh, get here and I'm not sure. So this is now running just on the device. So it's not even running on well, with the with the debugger. And uh, what we can see, so if I, me, oops, if I rerun it, uh, we will run the application with the with the debugger on. So I can, you know, you can see here the Metal API validation enabled, initialized TensorFlow Lite, and you know, and this device is running. I don't know why it thinks that right now this is a, a syringe, but let me see. All right, yeah, and there is some information here I hadn't seen, so we can put more more threads to it or less threads. So what I'm doing right now, you could change this number to tell the application how many threads you want uh, TensorFlow to use. And inference time, 42 milliseconds. If we go up, not sure why it goes up. It should go down, I guess, but let's just leave it there. All right, resolution, 
whatever resolution. Okay, cool. So this is an off the shelf example. So what I would do right now is just try to dissect this a bit. So we're gonna close this here. Everything is being done for us. So what we have, uh, the first thing we have here is a So it's a do, 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 do application. So this is the, the application delegate. I'm not sure. And there is nothing really here that we can see. Mm, okay, so I'm gonna go to the storyboards. So this application seems to be not done with Swift UI, so the entry point for this app seems to be the, the view controller. As I mentioned before, I'm not really familiar with the latest versions of, of Xcode. So it's been a while since I last um, have been coding for iOS, but you know, this is a refresher for me, hopefully something to learn for, for you. All right, main, so we get the view controller is TensorFlow Lite. Uh, what is this? This is, Let's see, this is the inspector panel. So we can see this is scale to fit, UI view. Preview view and UI view. So this preview view model views, curved view. Right. So what if we do to, just trying to understand the, the architecture of this application to see the functionality that we get. Okay, so the preview view is the, the actual um, layer that is getting the, the webcam, all right. So what I just did now, it seems like this, you know, this um, radius, the radius of the curved view is what we just change here. So that curved view, if we put it to 200, there'll be like a huge curve there. See, so nothing great but you know we've identified that that's what it is we leave it we leave it as it was and close this okay the preview view layer expected ease of type video preview layer All right scale aspect ratio translator resizing should use clipboard image Display a preview of the image being processed. By default, it uses device's camera frame, but will use a still image copied from clipboard. It should use clipboard image is set to true. Both false, did set, if clipboard, blah, blah, blah. All right, let's actually try that. Hadn't tried that yet. So let's download an image on my iPad. So Google images. Let's just put this here and this here so we're gonna look for um tiger all right let's get that one copy all right so once we've copied it supposedly this will okay one second Hmm, not really sure what that's meant to do, but copy. Hmm, not really. Okay, that didn't work. Cool. So, do, 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 camera feed manager. This method delivers the pixel, this method. 
Alright, request camera access. Cool. Alright, yeah, I guess there is a lot of complexity here. And I guess we're gonna have to dissect this over the course of different days and, and try to understand what it's doing. Mm, what I'm gonna look for is on this code, let me see. Mobile net. Model data handler. Alright, so at least we can take a look so it says model info and label so these are the the file info assets of the model and this file model data handler is probably the one that is handling everything so we have here internal properties result count three threads so probably if we put this to six we're gonna get uh, more predictions not just three so we'll get six um put that there Yep, so we get more predictions here and the view adapts itself, which is pretty nice. Cool. Uh, thread count limit, model parameters, but size, input channels. Cool, cool, cool. All right, run model. Cool, at least we're going to get to see how to run the model here. So we have the pixel buffer so it probably comes from the camera source pixel format image channel so it's rgba scale size cg size thumbnail center thumbnail You see, so something interesting here, if the model is quantized, uh, we set the, the data type to uint8. If the model is not quantized, it's probably gonna be a float. Interpreter copy, date, running first by invoking interpreter. Quantization. All right. All right, so this is TensorFlow code, which is really similar to what you would see on, on TensorFlow.js. So this is interval output tensor. So the input tensor, remove the alpha component from the image buffer to get the RGB data. RGB data from buffer, input, blah, 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 fail to convert the image buffer. All right, so once we have copied the RGB data to the input tensor. All right, so we're copying, so in TensorFlow, what we need to do is that we allocate a tensor. So our input tensor is uh, input at zero. And after that, we copy the RGB data we got from the pixel stream into that uh, tensor at zero and then we invoke it so if we invoke the operation okay, we have the the interpreter with an input rgb data image and then when we invoke it the model actually passes it through and then we need to get the output tensor so we get uh, interpreter output at zero right we can get the interpreter output at zero uh, or the output at any moment and we'll have to update the rgb data and then invoke again for the network to process a new file. Once we get the output tensor, we have a helper function, it seems here, that the quantized results are uint8 output tensor.data. So that's the data contained on the output tensor that we're getting. Then we map the information to quantization scale multiplied by floats, quantization zero point. All right, so this is like, um, 
So that's the average and the mean of the model. I don't remember exactly what it is, but I, I've done this before. If it's float 32, uh, we convert that into float 32. And then we get the top end results. So the amount of results or inferences that we uh, told the model that we want, that's what we're going to get. And right now here after the soft mobile net, we'll get a set of indices of the results, but then we need to um, get the actual labels from, from the file. So in get top results, we get the floats, descending order, and we get the zip results, which is mapping indices to the actual results. Oh no, so indices to results, sorted, Blah, 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 okay. So we get the sorted results from higher to lower confidence. All right, and get, get, we get the, um, the label strings. So we get confidence and labels. Love labels. All right, yeah, so this is just an approximation to, to Swift and TensorFlow Lite and, you know, loading a model and stuff. It seems like this example, even though it's meant to be just to display the functionality, it's pretty complex. So there is like a lot of um, different classes here and a lot of complexity added to it. I think what we can do in the next video, so next week, is actually go ahead and, and simply build the minimal example we can to load a model, then the, in, instantiate a TensorFlow Lite invoker or an interpreter, and uh, pass through it input data that we provided with, maybe selecting from the camera roll or from hard-coded data that we added to the application folder. Um, yeah, so I'll just make sure that we have here. So let's put here this link. I'm gonna make sure that I add, the, so this is like 12. Um, TensorFlow light, TensorFlow light, image classification, iOS sample app. Put that there. What is CocoaPods? And what else we got? Yep, and maybe just that for now. All right. So, so far we've gone on for an hour and as I said today, I just wanted to, to get going with uh, some of these um, uh, TensorFlow Lite code in, on an iPad or an iOS with uh, Xcode. I'm just going to go ahead and, and close up here. Uh, so this is, this is the, the normal <laughs> outro that I do. So this was part of the machine learning series. It's being shorter than usual, but just wanted to make sure that we didn't miss this week's um, live stream. I would like to thank you so much for, for watching. Go ahead and like the video if this is something that you enjoyed and more you want to see more content like this or if you would like to see other videos of machine learning. And subscribe if you want to get notified when I go live or when I publish new videos. Uh, you can join us on the community at none of the discord. We can maybe hack a bit or like share some things that you look um, or find over the holiday. And uh, yeah, again, thanks a lot. It's been Nono here. I'll stay here for, for a few minutes in case that uh, you have any questions. If you're live, uh, so you're connected live at the moment or otherwise we'll, we'll end up and, and I'll see you next week.
Okay, I'm, I'm gonna go now. I'm just gonna record a quick outro that um, I have been meaning to record for a while for for videos. So I'm just gonna record it a couple times and then we'll we'll finish. Hi, this was Nono Martinez Alonso and this video was part of the machine learning series. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Hi, it's Nono Martinez Alonso. This video was part of the machine learning series. Go ahead and like the video if you'd like to see more content like this one and to subscribe if you wanna get notified when I upload new videos or when I go live. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Okay, once more, I forgot about the... <laughs>